I'm Bill Butler. I'm the Director of Creative Design here at Garner Holt Productions, and I'm acting as the overall creative lead for GHP's efforts for the refurbishment of the Calico Mine Ride. It's quite an undertaking. There are a lot of uh, uh, brand new figures. We're rehabbing some of the existing figures that were there, and we're adding uh, more. So. I think we have about 120 figures or so in this scope, which is actually uh, greater than the number of figures we put in the uh, um, log ride. These are the first set of figures that are going down the installation in the Glory Hall. These are all new characters that we've created for the show. These are based on body forms and masks and all sorts of new things that we've created just for this show uh, using some of the original masks, some of the original types of sculptures that we created for the log ride. Along the way, a lot of our animators are working on the internal mechanisms for the figures. This attraction has a lot of simple characters that are only three or four functions, but also some very complex characters. The first character that we meet on the show is the Greeter, which is being built right here. He has lots of detail in his body, arm movements that go up and down, torso motion, bending forward, backwards, head moves all over the place, and he actually speaks to you as you enter the mine and introduces you to the world of mining in the 1850s and 60s. We have fewer opportunities for entirely new scenes in the mine ride, so what we decided to do instead is new ways of staging, new ways of presentation. One of the more dramatic versions of that is as we come up the lift hill towards the back of the attraction show building and come into the glorious cavern scene at the top of the hill, at the present time, and as it's been since the ride opened, you come up and the lights are already on. Now, as you come up the lift hill, the lights will get darker and darker until as you get to the top, you're in total darkness. You enter the cavern's room now in pitch black. You hear the narrator say something about, oh, let's have a little bit more light on down here. At that point, one light comes on and then many more as we have a beautiful, dramatic reveal of the glorious caverns. This is a typical mask, uh, like the ones we were creating for the mine ride attraction. This is made out of a proprietary silicone formulation to ensure realism in the face. Each one of the hairs uh, and the eyebrows, the mustache and the beard are punched in one by one. Same with the hairline. That way, when the wig meets the front of the face, it looks like a natural progression between hair and skin. This is one of the original breaking beams from the explosion tunnel scene at the end of the attraction. This is the uh, pinnacle, the thing, the climax of the entire experience. We're reusing Bud's original mechanism and scenic for this because you just can't do any better. Each one of these was built almost tailored to where it was in the attraction such that its motion is specific to the scenery that's around it. To try to replicate it, we would have had to build it inside the attraction. There are few attractions that I can say go back to my childhood. I was born in 1960, the same year this ride was built. And then years later, when I was a child and, you know, maybe five, six, seven years old, I remember sitting with my dad, you know, being, holding his hand, being afraid, you know, thinking that I was going into a real mine. And just having gone through that and remembering that and how cool it was then and how educational it was. And fast forward and here we have the opportunity to go in and enhance the ride and make it better. Um, it's a neat, neat thing for us. It, it's more meaningful than just a job, you know and uh, so we're hugely excited to be doing this. Stuff.